Welcome to the Rogers International Airfield Briefing Video. The purpose of this guide is to familiarize you with the intricacies of the runway, the terrain around it, and safety considerations when operating in and out of this airport. The runway at Rogers is 1,500 feet long, 60 foot wide, with an 800 foot uphill overrun. The field elevation is 1,058 MSL. The runway is smooth, has good drainage, and is regularly maintained year round. CTAF is 122.75, and there will be an air boss on frequency during events. 1,200 feet from the approach end to runway 35 is a ridge that is 400 feet above the threshold elevation. Precise energy management is key to making a safe landing in the touchdown zone, which in this case is the first 500 feet of the runway. In this landing, you can see the touchdown occurred a few hundred feet from the threshold, which resulted in minimal braking. However, there's no shame in using the overrun if needed. If use of the overrun is warranted, directional control is paramount. You'll be rolling out on an uphill grade, steering the aircraft up the hill to the right to maintain center line. This is something that most pilots have little to no practice in and could result in loss of control if you're not adequately prepared or you're traveling too fast. On departure, taxi up to the top of the overrun and accomplish all pre-flight checks in accordance with your aircraft standard procedures. For most aircraft, a full power departure from the top of the overrun isn't really necessary. Again, much like rolling out, most of us do not practice turning the aircraft on the departure roll while applying power and maintaining center line. You can see the empty oil tank on the west side of the runway. Most aircraft start their takeoff roll at or just before the oil tank and gradually apply full power. The overrun is mostly straight here at this point and offers an easy position to start your takeoff from. You can see that there's plenty of room to turn around at the top of the overrun and start your slow taxi back down the hill. From the oil tank, you'll have approximately 1,700 feet of runway remaining, with the first 200 feet of that going downhill. The main hazard on departure is the ridge that is 400 feet above the runway elevation and only 1,200 feet from the departure end of the runway. While there are some high-performance aircraft that can climb over it, this really isn't recommended. A climbing right turnout through the valley is the safest option to avoid all terrain. Now let's take a look at an arrival from Stanton, Kentucky. Directly off the nose of the airplane is a small blue water tower. This is one of the most prominent landmarks that stands taller than the trees in this area. Conveniently, it's about one nautical mile north of Rogers. After spotting the water tower and flying over it, a 15 degree left turn will put you on a heading that will join a right downwind for runway 35. You'll see a small clearing in the trees just ahead. This is Mountain Springs Cemetery Road, and this is the next valley over from the runway, just east of it. Right now I'm pointing where the runway is. During events, there'll be a yellow weather balloon to help spot the runway. From here, you should set yourself up to make a normal right-hand traffic pattern. 
configure the aircraft just as you normally would for a short field landing. Our goal is to do a stabilized descent to the top of the ridge and then steepen our descent for the last 400 feet left to the runway. A good landmark for turning base is the next valley. This sets you up for a little less than a one nautical mile final. Good situational awareness is key in the base turn. You'll be managing the aircraft while also trying to keep the field in sight, which is not an easy thing to do out here. In this frame, it's kind of hard to spot, but the runway is just under the window latch there. On final, you should be fully configured for landing and able to make a stabilized descent to the top of the ridge. This will be steeper than normal. Over the ridge, we need to lose about 400 feet of altitude and only 1,200 feet laterally. Here's the same approach from the outside of the airplane. While the trees look pretty close from the inside, we still had pretty good clearance on them. Depending on the performance of your aircraft, once you're below the treetops, a go around may not be possible due to the rising terrain. It's better to make your decision out in the valley than over the runway. Once touching down, directional control is extremely important. The runway narrows just a little bit in the middle Lowing aircraft in particular should be aware of their ability to maintain center line and where their wing tips are. Thanks for taking the time to watch this briefing guide. Hopefully it's helped familiarize you with operating in and out of Rogers. There really isn't any other place like it. It can be a challenging place to fly into, but the views and the people that you'll meet there are well worth it. Hopefully we'll see you at one of our events or just to drop in and say hello. As always, obtain prior permission, fill out a waiver, and have a great time while you visit.